Hi, my name is Josh and we are here today in the Natural History Museum's storeroom with some rather large snakes. Um, I'm here with museum researcher Nia who has been talking a little bit about how anacondas give birth. So if you're interested in that, then don't forget to check it, the link in the description below. Um, today, hello, first of all, hello Nia. Hi, hello. <laughs> um, we're just going to talk a bit more about anacondas in general. So I think a good place to start for most people at home is, you know, where do we find anacondas? Where do they live? Um, and I suppose like how many species are there? So it's debated how many species there are, but it's supposed to be three to four species mm -hmm. and they all live in South America. Uh, they all belong to the genus Unectes, which in Greek actually means good swimmer uh -huh. because they spend most of their time in water. Um, however, they can also live in thick bushes and on trees from mm -hmm. which they can drop down into the water. Wow, so they're obviously incredibly big. <laughs> That's one of their defining features. Um, what are they eating and you know, how are they living in the rainforest? So they're so big and their prey tends to be quite big as well. They eat a lot of things um, from capybaras to even jaguars and caimans. Wow. Uh, which, they're not venomous snakes. Uh, they constrict the, their prey until they suffocate or sometimes they even drown them in mm. the water. And then they will swallow them whole um, using the, the stretchy ligaments in their jaws. That's extraordinary. And it takes sometimes up to eight hours for them to swallow their prey whole. Wow. And up to two weeks to digest it. <laughs> I'm not surprised if it's that big. Yeah. I didn't realise I ate things like jaguars and caiman. That's yeah. extraordinary. Like a real sort of proper apex predator yeah. in that sense. Um, and they have some quite cool adaptations, I gather, to living in the yes. water, right? Um, can you just talk us through some on this lovely specimen? Yes. So they spent most of their time in water, which is why they have the eyes and the nostrils positioned at the top of their heads mm -hmm. so they can stalk their prey while mm -hmm. still in the water and then kind of jump out and get them while they, mm -hmm. when they stop to take a drink. Wow. I think it's amazing with this specimen, particularly it is like how small its eyes are yes, and how small its right, head is. Yes, they're right at the, the end yeah. of the nose. Yeah, compared to the rest of it. Mm. Um, and when it comes to their size, I mean, how big are we talking? What sort of size do they get to? So they're usually around five meters long. Um, however, uh, they weigh from 30 to 80 kilograms, mm -hmm. which is quite hefty. Um, they're not the longest snake in the world. They're the second longest after the reticulative python, but they're the largest snake by weight. Uh, one of the largest recorded specimens weighed 97.5 kilograms. Wow, almost 100 kilograms. Yes, crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and as I gather, it's quite difficult to tell the length of the snakes. I mean, it seems quite surprising. You think it'd be quite easy to measure a snake, but why is that? So why has it become a challenge? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult actually um, because of their remote location and because of their size. So estimating live size is very, very horrible and people overestimate them mm. quite a lot. However, from specimens, it's also difficult because when during the tanning process, the specimen can stretch by up to 50% or it can be overstuffed by someone who's very excited <laughs> and um, like the specimen that we have here. Mm. I guess lots of people want to find the biggest snake and exactly. so they sort of make that happen, I guess. Yes, exactly. That's quite funny. Um, and when it comes to the differences between the sex as well, I gather there's quite an extreme difference between males and females in that sense as well. Yes, so on average females are around 32 kilograms, mm -hmm. while males are seven kilograms, oh, wow. which makes females four times larger than the males. That is wild. I didn't realize there's quite a big difference mm. between them. Um, and do we know why the females are so much bigger than the males? So for females, it's actually beneficial to be larger because then they can produce more offspring. Mm. Um, however, for males, it, it's beneficial to be large at, at a point, to a point, because um, if you're a really large male, other males are going to think you are a female and try to mate you, which prevents you from mating with an actual female. Yeah, fair. Um, and when it comes to the mating um, and their sort of sexual reproduction, that's also really interesting as well. Can you talk yes. us a little bit about how they mate and how they have sex? Yes. So this happens during the breeding season. The female will release pheromones to attract males to come to her. Um, and then they will coil the female um, into a breeding ball, what it's called. And it can be up to 13 males coiling around one female. Wow. And lasts two weeks on average. That's Crazy. incredible. Wow, so you can have up to 14 snakes. That's all <laughs> together in one ball. In one massive yes. ball. Wow, that is amazing. That must be like quite incredible to see. Yeah. Um, and 
Um, when it comes to their sexual reproduction as well, they can do it in both sexually and asexually, is that correct? Yes, so the most common mode of reproduction for them is um, sexual reproduction. However, there's been cases observed, usually in zoos actually, mm -hmm. where a female has been kept alone for a while, for like eight years, and then gives birth to babies, um, which are actually genetically identical to the mother, because mm -hmm. the, there was no male involved. Yeah, um, we actually have a, um, a separate surprising science on parthenogenesis, if you're interested in that, then do go check that out as well. Um, we sort of delve into that a bit more um, because it is a really fascinating yeah. process. Um, and when it comes to um, them giving birth alive young and not having eggs, you know, why, why do they do this? What is the benefit to the snakes? So the benefit is, first of all, they are semi-aquatic. So they spend most of the time in water, which means they don't really have any safe spaces for um, laying eggs on land basically so this, the eggs are actually safer within the mm -hmm. large and powerful female than they would be just left outside by themselves um, which is why it's easier for them to give birth they actually give birth most of the time in water uh -huh. um, which is the safest way to for the babies to survive basically wow that's really amazing yeah. um such fascinating animals um and so amazingly big um thank you so much for taking the time to chat through. thank you so much <laughs> yeah um, it's been an absolute delight that was absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed learning more about these absolutely enormous snakes. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite anaconda fact was. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.